All right. Hey, welcome to Speechless. We're glad to have you here this Thursday night. And uh, after the break we had last week, I hope you enjoyed the uh, candidates for Maplewood uh, City Office. Uh, I'm going to show a short video about elections that are coming up here on November 5th in the Maplewood area, plus St. Paul and other areas. But uh, so be aware of that um, because you know what? You don't have to vote, but you should. Um, but get out there. Uh, and otherwise, you really don't have a right to talk, in, in my opinion. Uh, if you have a comment or question, please feel free to call in, 651-747-3838. And if you don't want to call in, you can email, email me at speechlessmn at gmail.com with your comments and questions uh, or ideas for the show. We certainly appreciate that. Uh, I'll get back to you sometime. <laughs> I don't know. This is a volunteer show. I just, you know, you just got to know this. This is a community TV. But we got a fascinating show tonight. Uh, we're going to be discussing, uh, well, what do, you, what do you say, judicial corruption again? Uh, we're going to be looking at Scott County. We're going to be talking about oaths of office. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, child support system and just the type of games that are being played in our court system uh, to do harm to families, to kids, and it's, it's just another horrific story and how our courts protect judges uh, when they misbehave or don't do a duty that they're supposed to do. And, you know, you don't want to just beat up on people, you know, and just throw the bums out type of thing. Uh, but there comes a time when you have to do it because it's just so bad. And uh, when there's requirements to make, you, you got to look at the circumstances, but you still have to follow the law in a lot of this, uh, especially when it relates to constitutional issues. And it's not happening in our court system. And so we're going to get into that discussion here. Um, but before we do that, what we're going to show, I'm going to lead up... Uh, to this story by talking about attorney Michelle McDonald who's with the Family Innocent Project and how she was arrested <laughs> uh, in a courtroom during, uh, during a hearing, had to finish the hearing uh, in handcuffs for her client, um, but we'll get to that in a bit. Um, but she was also in the appellate courts just last week. Uh, I heard about this case, I went down to film it and um, just going to show you a little clip as to what goes on here. I thought it was just fascinating what took place. And that will lead into our show. But first of all, okay, elections coming up. Got a little uh, um, advertisement piece. I don't know if it's advertisement. A little piece about elections in Maplewood. Uh, telling you, well, first of all, uh, parents, you don't want your kids to see this. Uh, this is uh, adult content. I don't know if I call it that, uh, a disorderly conduct is taking place by an elected official uh, in Maplewood. Uh, it's graphic, and um, so I'm warning you, you know, beware. This is uh, not for kids, and so get them away from the TV. Uh, don't watch this, but here's, here's what's coming up in the Maplewood election, so let's roll the tape.
Why is it that we have too many parks? To send a message, press 2. To send a message, press 2. To erase this message, press 9. All right, there you have it. It's what I call the race between the mean women and the nice women. <laughs> and so, of course, my vote's behind Diana Longry, uh, Rebecca Cave, and Margaret Behrens. And they're just a different class of women altogether. Uh, so, uh, again, I warned you, it's graphic. What happened there was disorderly conduct. Should be charged out. Um, by uh, the city because it was done in public in the city council chambers at a break uh, uh, in the city council meeting uh, in front of uh, uh, citizens of the city. And that's not the type of behavior that should happen here in, in Minnesota uh, by our public officials. So, again, the angry women versus the nice, responsible women. That's, that's, what, that's what we want to have here. All right, okay. Um, I, I couldn't believe this had happened. I was going to, I film, I'm one of the few people that films at the uh, courts. And I was filming, I called in, because you have to give 24 hours notice to film a hearing about a person who supposedly text a domestic uh, a text somebody and was charged with domestic terrorist threats, which is a felony. And uh, so I, I thought that was interesting anyway, and it has to do with OFPs, and there are some problems with this whole case with evidence and everything. And so I got a tip on it, and I decided to go and film. And when I called down to arrange things and get my permission, uh, so to speak, uh, the person I talked to there, who knows who I am, just said, uh, well, do you know any of the parties? And I go, well, not, not, not the parties. Well, he goes, well, the attorneys. Well, yeah, I know one of them. And I remember him saying, well, you know Michelle McDonald, right? And I go, yes. And, well, you, you know she got arrested for, or, or she was causing problems in, in court. And I go, no, I haven't heard anything about it, and I hadn't. And she, uh, he, he goes on to tell me, well, I said, well, what did she do? He says, well, evidently contempt of court and was arrested and, and um, uh, had to spend the weekend in jail. And, you know, wow, uh, that's not the Michelle McDonald. I know what's going on here. So anyway, I went and filmed this hearing and talked to uh, <coughs> Michelle afterwards. What actually happened was during a break, uh, in a hearing, three deputies came up behind her and dragged her uh, down the hall. I didn't drag her, pushed her down the hallway. You're coming with me. They asked her for her name, and she goes, am I under arrest? You see, you don't have to give an officer your name just because they ask. You're under no obligation to do that. And she goes, what, you know, I, you know who I am anyway. You asked me if I was uh, so and uh, she didn't say that, but you asked, you just said what my name was. Why are you asking me what my name was? <laughs> what my name is. And second of all, uh, why are you arresting me? Why are you detaining me? Well, they never said, pushed her down the hallway, uh, and then eventually handcuffed her and put her in a wheelchair with the handcuffs in front and cuffed around the waist. Uh, there's a waist uh, band in order to, you have to have a waistband in order to have your cuffs in front. So um, uh, they then go and start asking her medical questions. And she goes, you're not my doctor. I'm not under arrest. And I'm not going to give you any information. Well, they held her in the uh, holding cell. And she was uh, arrested sometime around 1030. And they were during a recess in the hearing, a civil hearing. And then uh, at 1.30, they wheel her out in the wheelchair into the hearing, and her client's gone. Why? You know, who knows? And the client support group is gone. And so this group has been sitting there for three hours waiting for the hearing to restart. 
and she had to defend her client without her client there in handcuffs in a wheelchair. Un unbelievable. Uh, that's the video. We're going to watch a video of this Michelle McDonald. They end up, after the hearing, throwing her back in the holding cell and held her there. You know, usually if you're staying overnight, they're going to book you into jail, but they got to charge you with something. Okay? I mean, they don't have to charge you, but they got to tell you what the probable cause is for why they have you here so they can set bail and let you go. And you can get bail right away. Uh, and get out right away. But they wouldn't tell her any of that. And then, uh, uh, even though she was asking, and anyway, after 30 hours, they let her out of the holding cell and let her go. Uh, still doesn't know why uh, they did this. Now, you say, this is unnatural. Oh, wow, this is surprising. No, it happens a lot. Uh, I had an experience where that happened to me. Uh, definitely not as severe, but just like it, okay? No mention, no record, not even on the record anywhere that I was ever detained by the police. Yet they took down information, they gathered whatever, you know, they, they at least wanted, I gave them my name, they at least wanted to know that, uh, but there's no record of it, none. Uh, unbelievable. That, and our judges are doing this to a lot of people and they're wrong to do that. And so are the, the bailiffs, so are the deputies. When they participate in this behavior, they need to question the judge. No, you're not, judge, I cannot do that. I can't, I've swore an oath of office to uphold the Constitution. I cannot do that. Well, the bailiff, uh, of course, or the deputy uh, would be under threat of losing their judge. Uh, <laughs> yeah, losing their judge, losing their job because of the judge. So, interesting thing. So, I just wanted to show you a clip here now of Michelle McDonald in front of the appellate court, a three-judge panel, and she's talking about evidence in a, in a trial, and, and a, a felony trial, and how this evidence was used and shouldn't have been used, and the antics of the prosecutor and then a question that one of the judges asked, Judge Kirk, and I think he was being sarcastic, uh, but also you just don't know until the order comes out. I've read a couple of his orders. I liked them, uh, how he wrote them, and that he actually dug down and found, found out what was really going on in the case, uh, where most judges don't uh, do that. In my opinion, they're just trying to shuffle the paperwork dug down in the case, and I think he sent in a message to another judge about how our law um, officers are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So let's watch this video. Here I am vigorously saying I don't want the officers to testify because those officers, you know, dressed in uniform, the three of them had nothing to say. They didn't do an investigation. Um, First of all, what happened was the first officer, presumably, was just sitting at a desk and the gentleman came in with uh, presumably his phone and said, I've been uh, charged, you know, I, I have some phone messages I want to share with you. He said, and he testifies to that. Next. The next officer comes in and testifies. Oh, yeah, the guy at the desk called me. I came out and met with the complainant, and I took pictures of his phone. Doesn't even take the phone into evidence. I took pictures of, you know, he showed me the phone. Wait a minute, counsel. They're, they're not going to take somebody's phone in evidence and leave them without a phone? That yeah. just doesn't happen. Then, then there's no case. Well, no. Th Certainly you, that's, that's th not No, the there isn't, because you, you, well, I'm, I'm proposing that there's no case. Yes, they do take phones. If it's serious enough to have a felony-level terroristic threat, you have to have the actual phone. That's not the best evidence. Pictures of a cell phone. That means that anybody could come in and say, I have pictures of my cell phone messages. Look, it's these numbers. Here you go. I want evidence of a criminal activity going on. Um, it, it's nonsensical to me. Um, it's nonsensical to me if that's our criminal justice system that an officer can just take pictures of somebody, and it wasn't even his cell phone, which left the defendant at a, at a, a loss. Uh well, that, that's just amazing there. Uh, and I want to make this clear. Um, I, I wish I had a, 
a close-up of Judge Kirk when he did that because he was actually looking and looked at another judge. So it looked to me like he was sending a message to that judge that this is what goes on. But then he actually looked at the camera and smiled, you know, and, and, and I was right in line with the camera. And, I mean, we just kind of both chuckled at the same time. You know, so I think he was trying to be a little sarcastic there. I don't know, but that was my my uh, um, opinion <laughs> of what took place. Uh, and we'll find out when the order comes. But it's unbelievable why these officers were able to get on the stand when they didn't collect evidence. And one of the jobs of an officer is, for this serious charge, is to find exculpatory evidence too. That means evidence that shows that this did not take place. So there was no investigation. A year later, they come down the road, this kid gets charged with terroristic threats and uh, it has this hearing, it has this trial. And, you know, like a voice message, and you see this happening on the press, and like here, like what I just did is just a snippet. It wasn't the whole hearing, so be warned, you know, you, well, you can't go watch the whole hearing because it's not recorded. Oh, I have that. There only is one place you see that video, and that's right here on this show. You won't see it anyplace else, not even the appellate court. It's not on their website. No, they don't record these things at the appellate court level. You, you've seen that right here. I just That's why you watch the show. I know that. Um, but what took place there is um, no, when, when you have a recording, okay, you have to enter the whole recording into evidence. You can't just do a snippet. The same with text messages. You just can't enter one text message, you got to get the whole, the whole line of the text message. And these police officers did not do that. They just, and they gave the person the phone back. Un unbelievable uh, that this took place. So this should be overturned and should go back to trial and this conviction should be overturned. All right.